Hi, Megan. Hi, how are you? Thank you for coming. We are very excited to know a little bit more of this crypto uh, that is happening all over the world. I know you have been in uh, Dubai. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's been incredible. And first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it's really exciting to be here and uh, yeah, we've been doing kind of a, we're going to do like a world tour for crypto and wow. attend all the major conferences and um, it's very important for me uh, working in this field to be uh, at the cutting edge of everything that's happening. So, um, so yeah, we just came back from Dubai mm -hmm. and we're here in Marbella for a couple of days and then on to Miami. Wow. Can you tell me when you started, why you started, why you feel like you have to be in this world? Yeah, um, you know, I've always been interested in investing and finding ways to earn passive income and make the money grow. And um, at first I was interested in kind of like growth stocks when I first started out and I read and listened to so many audiobooks. I mean, hours and hours and hours trying to figure out what it was that I liked and what caught my attention and, and sparked my passion, right? And um, so I came across Bitcoin in one of these um, audio sessions that I was listening to many years ago and that started to pique my interest as a new way of doing things and a new opportunity that was much much more lucrative than anything else I'd ever seen and uh, I also did a master here in Madrid mm -hmm. um, in 2009 and we had had a, um, a reunion for the first class it was uh, presented by Google so it was a master for Google digital business and um, they flew someone over from the blockchain a major developer and he gave a talk at this reunion and that was what really got me going after he gave this talk and plus after having heard about it and read a little about it and and after I started to get to know a little more about it I never turned back it was like something clicked and it was my whole world was just different from that point forward so yeah, I remember meeting you I think it was two years ago yeah and you start talking about crypto and you didn't <laughs> stop for hours <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me. Yeah, I, I am really passionate about it. So I could talk for days really about this. Uh, it's it is my whole world now. It's my 100%. I'm 100% dedicated to crypto and uh, everything inside of this crypto world. So, so why don't you tell us for someone who is new uh, and crypto and doesn't really know how it works? Um, if it uh, tell me something that people that don't know nothing at all. Yeah, I mean, actually, it's the majority of the world is still very new to crypto. And people who work in crypto, we think that, you know, everybody knows what we know and everybody is aware of what we're learning. And it's just not that way. Uh, uh -huh. On the adoption curve, uh, the, the technology adoption curve, we're about 3.5%. And in order to incur mass adoption, we need to get to about 16 to 17% when it starts. So we are still early adopters. We're still in the early adopter phase. Um, so for everybody who's watching who's not aware of what cryptocurrency is, uh, the most basic way to explain it and how Satoshi Nakamoto, mm. the uh, creator of Bitcoin, uh, when it was first launched in 2009 in January, just after the recession, um, he envisioned it as a peer-to-peer -peer payment network that we would be able to transact uh, with our money on our own accord without a banker having to verify the transactions. So everything was autonomous and it was on a ledger that everybody could look at, very transparent, and that would allow us to exchange money peer to peer with no central entity, no centralized banker approving the transaction. So it was meant for us to be able to have financial sovereignty. And uh, that was how he first envisioned it. So a peer to peer payment network. Since then, Bitcoin has transformed a little bit into more of a store of value, um, more than a payment network, mm -hmm. as he originally envisioned. But there are many, many cryptocurrencies that are actually working as forms of technology that do many different things. And within this whole ecosystem, Bitcoin is more like digital gold now, where people store their wealth when they want to preserve their wealth within crypto. Um. With a lot of people that I talk about the crypto and what is happening, well, most, of, most of them really don't know how to act. And really, if they are very afraid of uh, investing in crypto and knowing if it's safe, not safe, and how the future what, what will bring us. I mean, it sounds very, very good, uh, but what can you say to these type of people who are still a little bit... Um, afraid or yeah I mean that's that's the majority of people now probably are a little bit hesitant and that's one of my missions as a professional in this space is to 
um, kind of create awareness and educate people on what actually crypto is and how it can actually change and revolutionize their lives and their financial freedom and their financial situation uh, is such an opportunity now. And it's normal to be afraid of something that's new and that you don't understand. Uh, but I would say to those people that if you're going to wait until Bitcoin is kind of a sure thing and for Bitcoin to reach in incredible heights until you decide, OK, now I want to do it until everybody around you is investing in this, then, you know, a majority of the opportunity is already passed you by. Yeah. So the move to be to be doing now is to look to professionals who you trust to teach you about it, to, to learn as much as you can and to go 100% on this now so that you understand what it is and then it takes kind of the fear away when you, when you build that understanding. And um, there's so many cryptocurrencies, no? I mean, they are like the most popular, like Bitcoin and all the others. But can you tell us something which we can trust more, which are new but could be in the future a good investment? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there are so many cryptocurrencies and just like in any space, um, when there's lots of opportunity to be had, there are also, you know, coins that are kind of scams or, or that aren't doing positive things for the community. And, um, you know, I, um, I work as a consultant for uh, high end portfolios of crypto and NFTs, as well as for people who want to learn on a basic level. And, um, You know, you need to actually do your research and get that education on what are the coins that are actually building in this space from people who have vetted those coins, who have talked to the team and the founders and coins that have been around for a really long time that are doing revolutionary things. Um, some of those other coins besides Bitcoin and Ethereum is uh, Cardano, which is a smart contract coin, kind of like Ethereum in a similar mm -hmm. space. Um, we've got so many coins that are doing so many different things. And uh, I would consider them more like technologies even than coins because they're all solving different problems. So in order to filter through all of those coins, it'd be important to, to do a lot of research or to learn from somebody who has done that research. Good. Um, NFTs? <laughs> yeah, so NFTs are very important, especially for what we're going to touch on today about real estate and, um, you know, the metaverse and digital land. Um, NFT stands for non-fungible token. And the most easy way to envision what an NFT is, is you are the digital, you are the owner of digital currency or a digital identity. So um, basically on the blockchain, you can verify your digital ownership of a unique token. Mm -hmm. So unlike Ethereum or Bitcoin or fungible tokens, which are all the same, there is never one NFT that's the same as the next. They're all completely unique. And that's what makes NFTs so special is that that's your unique digital ownership. So even though there can be a picture of art, uh, music, a GIF, even a tweet, Um, it's what's behind that picture that matters. It's your digital key to the ownership of that asset. And that asset can even be a real world asset, such as a, a home or an apartment. So you're saying that uh, it be possible that people buy houses or whatever, cars with NFTs? Yeah, so um, the question usually comes in is, how can I buy, uh, purchase a home with crypto? And the better question or the better answer to that is actually crypto and NFTs are going hand in hand in this case that you can purchase a home through an NFT with your crypto. And the NFT acts as an added layer. So this is really, really cool concept in that the NFT acts as the ownership title to the home. So imagine if you could actually do a transaction as quickly as you would transfer through Venmo or Revolut here in Europe, a Revolut transaction mm -hmm. and own the title, the deed of a home that quickly anywhere in the world. How, how do you think that governments are going to be handled all of this? And I, I understand that if you want to buy, let's say, this apartment that actually is for sale. Yep. Okay, well. at Pure Living. It's, say that you want to purchase this apartment of 4,195,000 euros mm -hmm. in NFTs or Bitcoin. Um, I understand that you, you have to put that into euros or how does it, uh, because you yeah. can upset whatever you want, of course. Right, yeah. But then you have to have the value in euros. Right, so 
the owner of the property would then decide what they wanted to accept as the digital currency, whether that be Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whatever the currency they choose. And then through the smart contract that is written to transfer the, the deed, the title deed of the house, then they can set the parameters. So if the house is worth uh, 4,195 euros, then you can set that in the smart contract that will uh, do, um, execute the equivalent of the cryptocurrency of choice. Okay, so let's say that we have somebody that wants to buy this, this unit mm -hmm. and uh, the buyer is paying in crypto mm -hmm. or NFT, but he doesn't accept crypto, he will accept euros. Mm -hmm. That could be changed how fast and how safe or what value do you give? You give the right moment of the market or you set up a price? Um, value. So you're asking if the owner wants to accept um, fiat currency and the buyer wants to pay in crypto. Yeah, you want to buy it in crypto, mm -hmm. but I only have set you euros. Mm -hmm. And then you have to exchange from crypto to euro. Yeah, uh, I suppose will... that would require a payment gateway that would um, convert those in the moment. That could be possible. It could be possible, yeah. But um, the real goal or objective there is to actually do the entire transaction in in crypto or nfts in both so that that way we wouldn't have to do those conversions because the whole point is that you're being you'll be able to pay in that crypto and the other person will be able to accept in that crypto as well but yes there could be that there could be a conversion of those you are doing this uh, process or other professionals in the area who is really uh, processing involved. payments or in, in exchange the cryptocurrency into Europe or dollar uh -huh. and then all those process um, I don't know if, if it costs you uh, a fee or commission or because mo most of the this is so new that everyone will say okay you can pay me in whatever you want but I want it transform or uh, right okay Europe. so now I think I understand the question um, so more than uh, actually converting it in the moment what you're asking is if I am the owner of the property and I received the crypto how can I how can I exchange that back to Europe? yeah or, okay. or you can exchange it just before transforming my right. crypto into mm -hmm. euros mm -hmm. Right, well that would be done through a payment gateway most likely, uh -huh. but if you receive the crypto and you want to then trade it for um, a stable coin or actually your fiat currency, there are many different exchanges that can be used. Um, I also have a broker that I use for myself and my clients in Australia uh -huh. who process these transactions instantaneously and they're very fast and it's very easy because you can, a lot of times when you try to do crypto transactions here in Spain, for example, the banks, uh, they block the transactions to the exchanges um, because crypto is so new and the banks, you know, haven't yet found a way to be able to uh, work, uh, coexist with that. So um, what I recommend my clients is they use a broker. Mm -hmm. uh, and this broker, for example, in Australia charges a 3.5% fee. Okay. Um, for the conversion, uh, but you can transfer the money, the fiat currency back and forth with no issue seamlessly to your bank. Whereas if you were to convert that money on an exchange and try to get it back to your bank, a lot of times the banks block the transactions. Um, so one of the things that we it's happening here and they're very strong with it is the money laundry. Mm -hmm. So let's say when you come with your crypto, uh, how do you prove where you get it? Did that happen to you before? Well, I mean, everybody is working. Crypto is basically just uh, just like a, you know, you when you sell it, it's capital gains tax. So everybody, just like in the real world, has the duty to report that to their tax authority, wherever their jurisdiction is. And that's, um, you know, their prerogative. So, yes, you, of course, can prove where you have receive those funds from and your accountant should be able to account for that um, on your balance sheets and all the transactions that you've done. So um, that's up to that individual to report their taxes as is any kind of tax. If I want to open an account of uh, crypto NFT mm -hmm. for someone that really doesn't know anything about it, how so, can I open a, a crypto account? Yeah, so there are many different exchanges you can use. Um, in the US, one of the most popular and most known ones is Coinbase. Um, and that one is, you know, a lot of people like it because it's easy for, it's user friendly for beginners. Uh, it's a little bit higher fees, um, but it's it's very uh, good exchange to use, especially for U.S. investors. Um, here in Europe, I also like Binance quite a bit, 
And they actually just announced their headquarters in Dubai, mm -hmm. which is becoming a very crypto friendly um, environment. And also uh, the broker that I discussed uh, in Australia, they're called Caleb and Brown. Mm -hmm. And you can open an account with them and they can transact directly. So what that means is they can buy the assets, the digital assets over the counter. And um, that means that on exchanges, for example, when there's high volume, a lot of the times the exchange shuts down completely. And you can't get your order filled, you can't get your money out, because the exchanges, they, they do these kind of things when the volume is high, so that, you know, and also they can freeze your account out because they are centralized entities. So if something happens or a new law comes out and you have your money on the, the crypto exchange, they can just freeze your account if they need to because of whatever happens. Uh, whereas an over-the-counter broker always has access to these assets and always has liquidity to sell the assets in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of like the pros and cons of using both an exchange and a broker. Um, but they both work. And then as far as wallets, um, there's a lot of online storage, which is meaning um, we call it a hot wallet, which is connected to the internet. It's online. Uh, for example, the Coinbase wallet, mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, use that one. MetaMask, which is very popular to buy NFTs um, on the most popular marketplace called OpenSea, uh, is Ethereum-based wallet. And then uh, to keep the assets extra safe, I would recommend um, a Ledger hardware wallet. That is a Ooh. wallet that is never connected online. Uh -huh. And um, it's an added layer of security. So, so there is no access to, to that account. You can block it. Right. Well, the account is never connected online, but uh, it's safer if you have that one just to store your assets and another one to buy and sell. So that would be where you transfer the money to store it, to keep it safe. And then if you want to transact or you want to buy something or sell something, then you can transfer it to another wallet. Uh, that's what I recommend to my clients anyway. And what type of cost or fees of these companies about the, the money do you have of their, of their cryptocurrency? Fees to buy and sell. Yeah, or just to keep your, your I mean, the, the, the amount of fees that the banks, traditional banks are right. giving you in Spain are <laughs> Very high. Yeah, uh, so that, that is an issue. And like I mentioned before, I do consult for high end portfolios and my clients tell me that they have to even pay to keep their money in a bank, which sure. is absolutely insane. Um, so uh, you can keep your crypto in any crypto wallet absolutely free, but it's much better than that. Actually, you can earn lots of interest on that money through all of these crypto wallets, anywhere from, you know, five to 20 to 30 percent. In fact, um, this is a little bit more of a concept, but you can also provide liquidity for trading pools and uh, you can earn, I'm earning for some of the coins that I'm staking up to 110% APY. So imagine the kind of power you have now. You have access to tools that before only institutional investors had access to. And institutional investors, accredited investors, are people who have millions of dollars and now anybody has access to these tools and anybody can do that with their money. So it's really powerful. And if you have to choose or a country that is advanced with the cryptocurrency, what's, uh, what we, Dubai? Yeah, actually we were just in Dubai and I really love Dubai for many reasons, but the crypto atmosphere there was incredible. Um, there were a lot of people uh, building in that space there. It's kind of like the hub now of cryptocurrency. Um, another crypto friendly place is Portugal that just announced recently that, you know, they want to be also on the forefront of this movement. And, um, yeah, so Dubai is a 0% tax, which is amazing. Uh, the only tax there is in Dubai, if you have a company is a 5% VAT, if you are actually transacting in Dubai with other du companies in Dubai or the Emirates. So so. At this moment, it would be easy to buy, easier to buy a house with cryptocurrency in Dubai than any other place? Most likely, yes. Yeah, yeah um, it, it's always easier where there's more, uh, you know, established regulation. Um, it's harder in, in countries where that regulation still hasn't come yet because we're kind of working around it and trying to understand it as we go. And you see people over there uh, more open mind about this? Uh, yeah, yes, much yeah. more open minded. Um, but as I said before, the space is so small that the people that are interested in crypto is such a small group. Uh, we're not anywhere close to mass adoption yet. So actually what I wanted to talk about was uh, some examples of, um, you know, land that's been purchased through crypto. Uh, one of the examples was in Florida. 
actually. It was the first documented case there in the U.S. that a house was sold for $650,000 through an NFT. And um, actually, the, both the buyer and the owner, as far as I'm aware, were both women, <laughs> which is really cool because I'm also uh, an advocate for women in crypto. Do you know what age? I, I don't know the specifics, it but I, I, know. Know, I know they were both women. And um, it, was, it was pretty cool to see. So they put the, the house on an auction, um, as, and they put the title of the house, the deed, as an NFT, and people bid on it until the owner decided to accept the bid. So um, that was one of the first documented cases. And actually, this is going to be the future. Our whole lives are going to be run off NFTs. My We're son, going to get in our car. My son will love this. Yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It, we'll get in our cars. We'll open our houses. Everything will be done through NFTs. Even the owners club here at Puente Romano that we're both members of, we will actually be able to get into that members club through an NFT. Because, you know, uh, just take a piece of art, for example. What, how is the process to be able to verify that that piece of art is real and is authentic? It's a lot of money and time and, uh, you know, you have to hire an art specialist. In NFT, you just, anybody can look on the blockchain and verify that you're the digital owner of that asset. So, so if you buy an NFT, then you will get like like a title deed of it or what do you exactly. get that meaning that is yours yeah so in the case of a house you would get actually the the deed to the house the to owner the, house. The, the ownership of the house and then nft the nft is just a representation of that digital ownership so the nft might even be a visual representation of the house or in some cases which is really cool actually um there's a project i haven't vetted this project or looked a lot into it it's more about the concept But there's a project that came out recently that's called Satoshi Island. It's like a Bitcoin island uh, located between Fiji and Australia that they decided, okay, this is going to be an island for crypto people. And they're selling now deeds to houses that you can buy that actually act as your key to the metaverse as well. So you're buying a plot of land with a house on the plot of land, but you're also getting that plot of land in a digital world. So you can visualize your house and be in your house in the metaverse as well. Um, so they, supposedly they have sold 50,000 deeds already. <laughs> um, whether or not this project succeeds, it's the concept behind it that's the future. And, you know, the future of real estate is all digital. It's all NFTs. It's, it's just going to evolve in that way. Are there companies working already in the metaverse that you know? Or, or let's say that people living wanted to sell properties at the metaverse or land or apartments or villa. Yeah. How, um, how does it work? How can we have access to these type of properties or? Yeah, well, first I can explain, you know, what goes through some, somebody's head. For example, I've invested in the metaverse and um, I bought a plot of land next to the Board Ape Yacht Club and my neighbor is uh, Deadmau, the artist, mm -hmm. and my other neighbor is Hell's Kitchen. So when I invested in the metaverse, I was thinking I want to be in the Malibu of the metaverse or, or the Beverly Hills or Los Angeles, right? So there are different areas within that metaverse and different metaverses. Uh, the one that I'm referring to is called the Sandbox. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where all the major players are right now. Um, and so if you have a client, uh, for example, who wants to, who has a company who wants to be in the metaverse to get people to the traffic, the foot traffic, mm -hmm. because the whole goal is that wherever you're located in the metaverse, you get the traffic from that area. And it's going to be more or less quality depending on who are the neighbors, just like in real life, right? Um, so, uh, for example, if you have a client that has some kind of brand and wants to be able to be seen in the metaverse, then you could advise that client on where to buy based on their needs and also based on the size because there are different sizes of plots. For example, Snoop Dogg, he has a, an estate. <laughs> It's like 12 plots put together. And uh, the bigger your plot, obviously, the more attention you call and, and the more traffic you can get. And there are already companies selling. Yeah, so actually, uh, one of the companies is our other neighbor. It's called Every Realm. Every, um, Every Realm. Every Realm. Yeah, and uh, they are specializing in being brokers for people who are looking just for what we just discussed in the metaverse to have a presence there and uh, where best would suit them. So um, they are one of the only ones that I know of that are doing that now. So there's a huge demand and, and very little companies involved in this sector right now, uh, because I think largely because people don't understand 
uh, the significance. But the funny thing is, this generation, the upcoming generation, most of their first purchases of land are going to be digital. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, it's uh, an upcoming sector that needs to be explored. So, uh, for example, pure living, they could be actually, you could have a plot in this metaverse as your space where people can come and visit you in your digital office mm -hmm. and you can help offer, you know, uh, different plots of land within the metaverse. So, um, yeah, I think that Pure Living has a new, <laughs> new era, era coming. Yeah, and especially then... for these beautiful, uh, sunny southern Marbella apartments that you're, uh, you know, um, selling now and things. You could also have a digital representation in the metaverse. I mean, there's so many things you can do. And this so. is mostly happening in the uh, U.S., the metaverse? A lot or? of, I mean, there are different metaverses now. So there's ones based out of Asia that are more popular in Asia. Uh, but the biggest one that's happening now is, yeah, it's more U.S. oriented and it's the sandbox. Uh, there's also one called the Central Land that is uh, very popular, also more U.S. oriented. Um, but it will be expanding. Um, one of the coins in my portfolio actually just launched a huge metaverse called Metropolis. Uh -huh. um, so there will be many developments happening, but it's just a matter of being able to identify where are the best locations and, you know, the most traffic. So. And how will you recommend someone to buy in one metaverse or the other one? Uh, meaning of uh, it will be like uh, different areas, let's say like in Marbella, like buying in Marina de Puente Romano or buying in Guadalmina. Yeah. So the... Yeah, so that all, like I was saying, it all depends on right now who your neighbors are, you know, because obviously the land is not the same. There's not like, okay, the ocean's here and it's more based upon the type of traffic that's going to be going around that area. And it's hard for people to understand what a metaverse feels like until you actually try augmented or, or virtual reality. I don't know if, if you've tried it before, no. but um, it's, it's a very insane experience and until you actually do it and right now we're just in the beginning of it but you can go in a small plot of, of land just like this size and feel like you're traveling the world <laughs> um, so I think until people actually try it it's hard to envision the possibilities so you will have people um, living in the metaverse where you can buy clothes watches and restaurants and exactly. so on. Exactly. You'll be able to order your McDonald's or, it's you know, go to the pharmacy. <laughs> yeah, the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll be able to order your medicine from the pharmacy there. You'll be able to do everything there. Um, there's been so many uh, developments happening. And, you know, Bill Gates says within three years, we'll do all of our meetings in the metaverse. Uh, so I also believe that within three to five years, it's going to be much more developed than now and much more mainstream. Uh, so those positioning themselves now to be able to be at the forefront of this movement are the ones who are going to be established when it's time. So um, I see that as an excellent opportunity for pure living and also uh, me being involved in the crypto space. The people who are interested in buying right now uh, in crypto are mainly people who have been in crypto for a while and they want to be able to spend their crypto somewhere. Um, so those contacts are mainly gained through people in the crypto community, which is how you know um, real estate agencies like yourself can position yourself through contacts and people who are involved in this space. But you know, it, within some years, it's going to be much more mainstream. Like I said, NFTs are going to run our lives. Um, so so uh, I guess that um, pure living have to be there. You have to be there as one of the, the top real estate agencies here in Spain and Marbella. And uh, it's necessary to have a presence in the digital world. We have to be there. We, have, we need, obviously, your help. Absolutely, yes. And um, um, we're very happy to, to enter in a new area that we're all learning. Yes. Uh, myself, mm -hmm. because I have a lot of conversation with my son about the cryptocurrency <laughs> and an NFT. Yeah. I'm starting to understand it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we're very happy to, to have you. To, to, um, I would like to carry on with other interviews so you can explain um, our, our clients Absolutely. and any, uh, anyone who have really any doubts about it. Yes. With you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh, as I mentioned before, it's, it's what I do for a living. Um, I am a crypto consultant and F NFT consultant. So uh, I have a private clients in a platinum group, uh, which actually brings me to another point. Um, uh, you're in a wonderful position because actually here in Marbella, just a couple years ago, several years back, I had a friend uh, involved with a, a real estate agency here. 
um, for which they offered Bitcoin to pay for a $4 million apartment just like this one in Bitcoin when it was around $10,000. And I told her, accept it, just say yes and don't don't look back and you will never regret it. And of course, you know, it was it was earlier then and they were a little bit nervous about it and they didn't do it. But that four million dollars would have been worth twenty six million dollars today. Wow. <laughs> so. Um, so, yeah. So what I do is I help people um, consult for them to be able to allocate their investments partially to real estate as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's some excellent collaboration that you and I can do. For sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I would love to help out with that and do further interviews where we go more into detail on topics like tax and, um, you know, government authorities and more how the transactions themselves will take place. Yeah, I mean, at the moment we do not have any uh, owner or buyer who wanted to offer the to sell the property directly in, in cryptocurrency. Right. I understand that maybe after this interview, people are starting to be a little bit more interested. Yes, it's my uh, hope. Maybe that we will they... see in the web page cryptocurrencies. <sighs> Absolutely, yes. And, um, you know, setting up a wallet to receive cryptocurrency for uh, Pure Living would be an excellent next step as well. Um, actually, they have a thing called ENS domain, which is you can choose a domain.eth. So actually people can search for purelivingproperties.eth and send you directly just through your name. Uh -huh. They don't have to know all of your long letters and numbers wallet. They can just search for you through uh -huh. your name. Uh, so, and just to touch on how this actual property is appreciating in the digital world. When I bought my plot of land near Borde Yacht Club, uh, I bought it for around 1.7 Ethereum. And that was back in October. And I, I thought, you know, I want to get a second plot that's attached to it because I want to make a bigger plot and uh, develop an office and a business there for the Board of Yacht Club members. Um, uh, and I went back, like, I remember it was like a month later to buy the, the plot next to me and it was already announced for like 25 Ethereum. And that was a couple weeks later. And then all of the plots, if you go into the sandbox near Board of Yacht Club, they're announced for 50 Ethereum, 100 Ethereum. Whoa. I mean, people are really valuing this land. And uh, so we're still early and there's still opportunities, but just to give you an idea of, you know, how much this is gonna be worth someday. So it's an excellent investment now, both in digital and physical real estate. And um, I think you're in a great position. Megan, thank you so much. It was so interesting. So many questions still in my mind. Yeah. And uh, obviously I think uh, all the people that will see this interview will, will We'll have more questions that we will probably receive them. And I hope that to see you uh, very soon after your hundreds of trips. <laughs> or yes. we can do a Zoom and we can carry on with Absolutely. this world, which is very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we can get more into detail um, on the tax part of it and, and more into the details of the transactions themselves. But for now, I think it's great that people just start to visualize and, and try to understand the meaning behind all of this before we go deeper into it, because there's a lot to process, that's for sure. Um, but uh, thank you for having me. It was amazing to talk about something I'm so passionate about, and I look forward to the next one. Thank you so much. Okay.